your television set over the last couple of nights, you would have noticed a new series on this very network called Nip Tuck, which takes us behind the scenes of the increasingly popular world of plastic surgery. Take a look at this. You want the lights on or off? Can I tell him I love Ah, there you go. Joining us now from our Los Angeles studio, the star of the show, Julian McMahon. Julian, thank you for joining us. Looking very sharp, mate. Richard, thanks for having me. I'm sitting right in front of the Hollywood sign here. As you can see, it's a wonderful day here in L.A., so it's, it's good to be with you. You're in the heart of Hollywood. The sun is shining. For those who missed the first couple of episodes, give us the lowdown on Nip Tuck. Nip Tuck is basically a, a show about two plastic surgeons and their lives. You pick them up in their 40s, and they're kind of at a midlife crisis. However, the show, to me, is more about uh, choices that you make in life and the consequences based on those choices. So it's, it's, it's a show which, as we advertise it over here, is, is tries to be skin deep, but it is actually not. <laughs> it's a kind of a, a comedy slash drama. How difficult is it to get that balance right? You know, it, the show's so well written, I don't think that you have to worry about the balance. It's really, uh, it's quite prolific in regards to the dialogue, and it's really well um, sculpted in the way that it's uh, shot and also the way, the way that they edit it together. So I don't think you ever have to worry about that kind of stuff. The jokes are pretty much, you can play them straight or you can play them funny and they're going to work because they're so well done, uh, well written. So I think that that's not a, not a problem for us. Your character, Christian, is a bit of a, bit of a kind of ladies' man. Who, who had some trouble in the, um, ladies, man. Yeah, in the in the How's Your Father department in the first couple of episodes. Yeah, well, my he's actually obsessed with his, his partner's wife. So, and it comes to a point in time where he's about to have a, I guess what we should say, a sexual encounter with her. And, uh, and then he can't get it up for anybody else. And as you said, he's kind of uh, a busy man in the bed. So, it, it's not good for him. Your American accent is faultless these days. Do they think you're a yank over there? They do. I've fooled them so far, so Actually, we'll just I keep that work. between the two of us. <laughs> do, do, you, do these roles just come at you now? Do you get a phone call and say, how would you like to be in this? Or do you still need to do some auditioning and schmoozing the right people at the right time? You know, this was actually a role that I fought very hard for. Uh, they didn't want to see me for this role, and I auditioned at my house in my kitchen, uh, and I hand-delivered them a tape of the audition, and I gave it to the executive producer and the casting director. And I pleaded with them to watch uh, a couple of minutes, and that's how I got the job. So it, uh, it definitely, nothing has been handed to me so far, although I must say this show, because it's doing so well in the U.S., has opened plenty of doors, which has been great. So, Has the success of uh, actors like Russell and Nicole and Eric Banner and you know, Hugh Jackman and those changed things for the, for, the, um, for the Australian fraternity in Hollywood? You know, I definitely think that people have got uh, an Australian taste in their mouth, but I also think it comes down to individuality. I don't think, you know, they're not going to pertain themselves to an Australian just because they're Australian. I think it comes down to individual talent, and I think that that's, you know, what all these people that you mentioned, Russell and Nicole and blah, 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 you know, they're all pretty extraordinarily talented individuals, and I think that that's basically the be-all and end-all of, uh, of, what, uh, of what they're looking for. Yeah. Your father was, of course, Prime Minister of Australia. Do you keep in touch with politics down here? I don't actually, should I? Well, we've had a bit of a change in the leadership of the Labor Party. A guy called Mark Latham. Is you have? It? Yeah, Mark Latham's uh, taken over. Who? Mark Latham, oh, 42 really? years of age, western suburb of Sydney. Replaced Simon Crean as the oh, leader. Oh, he's a young the man. Way. He's a younger is man. He like the, one of the youngest, probably? <laughs> uh, or Is that right? Yeah, I think he's the youngest ever leader of the Labor Party. There you go. Oh, wow. Hey, Julian, congratulations yeah. on the series, mate. You're coming home for Christmas? Unfortunately, I won't be coming on for Christmas, but uh, look, thanks for having me on. I've been a big fan of yours for a long time. Didn't you host the original uh, MTV shows? Uh, in Australia, yes. They did it over there. You did? Before yeah, they did yeah, yeah. So I've been watching you for a long time, so thanks for having me. We've been keeping our eyes on you, too. Julian, thank you for your time, mate. All the best. Thanks. I just want to say hello to my mom and tell her I love her. I'm sure she knows that. And she's always watching. Hi, <laughs> Sonia. <on> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Julian. Thanks, Richard. And you can look out for Nip Tuck on Monday and Tuesday next week at 9.30 on the Nine Network, funnily enough. And uh, tomorrow, 